Hey, it's me, Anfa from Anfa Mr. Kam. And today I'm starting a new video series. It's going to be called Anfa Vlog, probably, or something. And I have a really harsh gate. Okay, need to release longer. And today I want to talk about Zenith Sub Effects modulation and why it's freaking awesome. Uh, I've worked with FM8 for a while from Native Instruments and uh, I got the impression that it's really nice. But what I saw today about Zenith Sub Effects is way beyond what FM8 can do. As far as I know, I didn't work for years with it. I just worked for three months with it and not all the time with it. So I don't know everything about FM8. I for sure know much more about Zenith Sub Effects, but I didn't know everything and I found out something amazingly awesome that I want to show you right now. I'm running um, Zenith Sub Effects that is a pretty new version. Uh, it's from Kick Studio Repositories. Uh, it's the GitHub version, so it has all the newest features. It's not the 3.0, it's 2.5 point something probably. And also I'm running Bodline, uh, this little program here, that is a um, audio analyzer, open source one, www.bodline.com. And it's pretty nice for spectrum analysis, but you can also use it for waveform view. So here it goes, like it's, it's our waveform analyzer and our spectrum analyzer at the same time today. So here we have the main sense of effects window. Uh, and I have my MIDI keyboard plugged in, so, um, well, I can play notes. Okay, so let's open up the instrument settings. Here we had add synth, sub synth, and pad synth. Actually, oh yeah, add synth is by default on. We open up the voice. And as you might probably know, AdSynth has eight voices. Like FM8 also has eight voices. Like they're called operators. Uh, here they're called voices because most of the time what you do is you enable different voices and you mix the output of all of them to create your sound. Right now we have a sine wave and we can hear that it is actually a sine wave. I've actually got change the octaves on my keyboard so I can play lower notes so I can play lower notes easier but actually I I can like reach out for the lower notes when I need them but I need also some higher okay so now let's open up the voice parameters and uh, what we have here is our sine wave now what you might know is that there is a panel called modulator and we have various modulation options here. For example, FM and PM, like they are very different and I'm not going to talk about all of the different types of modulation that are present here because it's a very vague and difficult topic. And, oh yeah, actually you can hear me better now. It's a very vague and difficult topic and um, you know there are some major differences between what PM and FM does in Zenith Sub Effects and in different synths because it varies from synth to synth. Like what Zenith Sub Effects does with PM is actually what FM8 or Massive or Citrus do and they call it FM, which is frequency modulation. PM is phase modulation. So the names I think are a bit mixed up, mixed up in the industry, and like it's hard to recognize what was what, and you just have to listen and experiment. Okay, so now we have a simple uh, sine wave modulated by another sine wave. Um, actually, how PM is different from FM, like you can't really see it very easily with sine waves, but if you switch to triangle waves like triangle wave for the modulation, for the modulator. When we slow down the modulator, and um, like 
kick up the, 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 the power of the modulation, the modulation index. You can see that we don't get a tone that it's changing in pitch constantly. Like if I change the FM, we get more what we expected. We get this actually this triangle wave imprint in our spectrum. This is what we expect, right? But when we use PM, we actually get like tone that alternates between two different pitches. And why? Well, because PM actually doesn't care about the amplitude of the envelope or PM actually cares only about the slope. So when the waveform, when the triangle waveform is sloping up, the pitch is offset up. When it's sloping down, it's offset down. And it immediately changes between slope that is downwards to a slope that is upwards. So there is an immediate change in the pitch. With sine wave, the slope is also changing in a sinusoidal way, way. Like it doesn't, this, this is why I said that it's hard to distinguish FM and PM when you use sine waves because they behave very similarly uh, sometimes. So this is very weird, but if you pitch the modulator up, you actually get a very nice, interesting effect. And this is what um, Seamless was talking about, that uh, triangle waves for FM are great for talking bass lines. Actually, if you... There is kind of a formant quality to this. There is a, a formant-like sound uh, to this um, result of the modulation. If we change to FM, and all, it sounds quite, kind of a similarly, but not quite entirely like uh, what we heard before. Okay, but this is not what this video was about, was going to be about. I wanted to talk about the amazing uh, thing that you can do with Zenit Sub Effects. And this is uh, about cascading the modulation. It's like we have the, the eight voices and actually we can modulate one voice with another. Uh, let's like turn off the modulation here, switch this source to sine wave again, and I'm going to change the pitch to zero, uh, sorry, the volume to zero. So when we actually play this, it makes a sound, but it's very, very quiet. Like, this is something that I would <laughs> like to actually change, because I would want this to be zero, complete zero. I, I think I need to report this as a bug, because it should be zero. But it doesn't very really matter uh, about what we want to do next. Next, I switch to the next voice, the voice number two. I enable it. Now this is the voice that is playing. You can see here in the spectrum that our first voice is also sounding one octave higher. But it's so quiet that we can't really hear it. We can see it on the scope. Can you hear the difference? I hardly can. The second sine wave is about negative 50 decibels. The first one is about negative 6, so it's like uh, 45 decibels of the difference. That's a huge difference. So the, the, the first voice is kind of a um, un beneath the hearing level. Well, it's just masked by everything else that is happening. 
but that's a bag that I'm gonna report nevertheless. Okay, so we have the voice 2 that is playing usable sound. And now what we can do is enable modulation. And we're using the internal modulators oscillator, which is another sine wave. But what we can what we can do is use an external modulator. And this is our voice one. Uh, every next voice will have more of these available. Like you see, the eighth voice has seven external modulators available. So all the all the voices before it in the chain, kind of. It's I don't know how does it work internally, but this is how it's presented. But I'm not going to use the eighth voice. I'm going back to the second one. And now we're using phase modulation, but the modulation is the modulating waveform is generated by voice one. You can see that when I change the octave here, the resulting sound changes. And if I disable this voice, the modulation doesn't occur at all. It's the same as if I just disabled modulation. Actually, it's not the same, because then we can hear this actually being, actually existing. Yeah, this needs to be fixed. Okay. So, um, well, the most amazing thing that you can do with this is that, well, with internal modulation, we have an envelope for an, uh, for amplitude, an envelope for frequency, and kind of that's it. But with using external modulation, first, you can have everything you want. This is amplitude envelope. The volume, it doesn't affect the amount of modulation that the voice produces. It affects only how much of the voice is being fed into the audio output. So we can use this as a modulator and listen to it at the same time, just like in FM8. Whoa, that's really loud, sorry. Okay, but that's like envelopes, we already have this. What we have that we don't have is like amplitude, LFO, uh, pitch LFO. That can have randomness. Have the frequency like dude this is amazing also what what we hear is attenuated by a filter because up in the in the global at synth window we have a lopus filter that is enabled and it's to turn down a bit We turn it up, or we can change it to a hapus filter and turn it, turn that uh, frequency down. It's funny you can see how much noise we get actually from this, and the lopus filter kind of protected us from hearing that. And that sounds much like Yamaha DX7, like. <laughs> but Yamaha DX7 only had sine waves as operators, and we don't. Like, you can have any freaking thing you want. You can then filter this with a bandpass. And yes, it's badly harsh. Like, you know, we're 
just messing up with two operators and we actually have eight of them. Like I said operators because in FM synthesis you call these things operators. But okay, but are they are voices in, in that sense. Okay, like this this is very harsh and not pleasant because we have so much high frequency in the modulating waveform. But what we can actually do is then enable the filter. Check this out. Yes, you can actually filter the modulating waveform. Here we're using a bandpass filter. Now, let's listen to what this, the modulating waveform is, is actually doing. How does it sound like on its own? Okay, we can notch up the stages to get a sharper filter. So this juggling is coming from the frequency LFO. That is very random and it has a high frequency. So this is how our modulator is sounding. Oh, I need to have it enabled, but I will turn the volume to, to zero. Now we can kind of counteract uh, the fact that our voice one is also making sounds by bumping up the volume of our second voice and turning down the hall. So in the global, I, I compensated for the gain that I put here, but there was no gain for voice one, so it actually it's it's quieter now. We can hear so we can hear less of it. Okay, but this is a simple sine wave. Let's try a saw wave. Oh, this is very very harsh. Uh, yeah, but maybe saw wave is a little bit too much because, but if we filter it down with a Lopus filter, like this, yeah, this is much more pleasant. Um, we have a very long attack. Also have a filler LFO. Like this is crazy. And guess what? We can actually modulate our modulating waveform. Yes. It can be modulated too. I can't really hear this because we're using the filter, but if I widen it, okay, let's get a simpler example. Uh, I'm going to disable this one for now. Uh, disable this also, and let's move to voice free. It's going to be our new modulator. We can hear it now. And activate voice 4, which is going to be the carrier. That means uh, the, vo the operator that is uh, actually heard, but is affected by another operator, uh, speaking in FM synthesis terminology. Uh, so we will use PM using the external modulator 3, which is the voice 3. Now let's turn this down, turn this up. You can see we get a lot of noise. Maybe this is something that could be approved upon. Um, what I want 
wanted to show you is that you can modulate a modulator. And let's modulate this with a different way. Like now we're using here, we're using phase modulation. And for our modulator, we use frequency modulation. And guess what? We can use an external modulator. Which is right now disabled. That's why we didn't hear any change or almost any. The thing is also that we have uh, a volume sensitivity for the modulation velocity sensing function. For If we turn this all the way up, it's disabled. So uh, the amount of modulation isn't affected by the loudness of the notes we play, uh, the volume the velocity. And this generally means that the modulation is much, much harsher. Now, why is it so interesting to use some s several like cascading modulators? Well, because every single one of them has its own envelopes, LFOs, filter, and can get really, really crazy with the the modulating network. Like, ah, uh, I can't even imagine how incredibly complex sounds you can get using eight voices and everyone has pitch amplitude and a filter envelopes and LFOs <clears throat> and each one can be modulated like you can't modulate it with more than one operator at what the same time which is something that for example FM8 or Yamaha DX7 I think were doing uh, but actually the amount of stuff you can do uh, like adding the amazing potential of Zenit SubFX oscillators that are literally like crazy. Okay, this is voice four. Um, I'm going to clear this. Yay. And keep it sign, sign like. So we have the voice four, which is sounding. We have the Voice free, which is just model etching. Let's turn the amplitude LFO. But we need to decrease the delay because it's on by default. And the delay introduces the LFO after some, um, some time. Uh, this is sometimes useful for vibrato on notes when you use sol solo instruments. Uh, so you hold the long note longer and it starts playing vibrato. Now, the voice free is modulated by voice two. Let's go to voice two, see what happens there. Uh, let's Make it a little bit more noisy by using the quanta size, maybe notching up the the hot lopus filter. And actually we could like get rid of the lopus filter altogether because we can use this lopus filter that we have here. Or even a band pass. And guess what? We can use an LFO. Or, uh, I mean, envelope. sounds very cold and digital but it's something that I really like um, oh, and we have our first voice that is also used for modulation which is actually like now disabled because we have disabled this voice but if we get back we can do clear and 
okay let's like do this convert to sign and then clear and this like makes actually applies almost everything uh, and transforms it into the harmonic series and then we can clear the harmonic series so we get like the sine wave <laughs> Actually, you get more than eight operators because you can also use the internal modulating oscillators. They have less options because they don't have the LFOs and the filter and the unison, which is also a thing. <laughs> but you, you have it, you can use them. You see how our modulation gets noisy with more unison voices? This is what we had. And if we bump up this to six, we have like a big detune because 130 cents is a lot. I think it's. I think it was softer with. Maybe we need to like enable this in another voice and bump the frequency spread. Well, we actually got some stereo effects. I didn't expect that to be. Bump the stereo down. Okay, it's caused by the unison. Well, uh, actually this is a discovery because I thought that the modulation is performed with a mono signal. And this proves that it actually is performed with a stereo signal. Because if we use the stereo spread and have it at least in the center, which means roughly, um, roughly uniform distribution of the voices, uh, if you bump it to maximum, it's very wide. Dude, this is crazy. <laughs> okay, we have this voice. We can do something else with it. Like, we can modulate this even further. crazy and enable a LFO on this filter and make it a bit random yeah also why shouldn't we enable frequency LFO on this one let's see what we'll do I mean maybe once one thing at a time so we can keep track <laughs> Dude, this is getting very crazy. And okay, let's enable let's enable frequency LFO on the voice free. And well, I'm afraid it, it's gonna be very, very uh, well it might be disastrous, but let's try it anyway. <laughs> Cool. Okay, I think this is uh, this is for now. Uh, we'll half an hour in. Um, well, this is just the beginning. Like. I'm, I've just discovered this feature and we've used just four voices and made something that's pretty impressive I'd say you know like yeah <sighs> now Zenit sub effects is, is is really like it doesn't step to amaze me I thought that I know everything about it almost everything by using it for 10 years and releasing like 
three full-length albums, dozens of tracks made entirely with it, and I still don't know everything about it. And I think this feature is very unnoticed, and like, like nobody knows that Synet Sub Effects can do this amazing stuff, like with this cross modulation with different voices. Dude, I don't. Know, this totally blew blew my mind, and uh, I want to experiment more with it. And you will probably see some more videos about me having fun with this. <laughs> And let's try some very, very low notes. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. Let's hit them very, very, very subtly. Well, that scene, that sounds like something's broken. Or just very angry. can do using the MIDI learn um, but that's I feel that MIDI learn is quite experimental in the of effects oh wait like, let's save it for another video like there's a lot of stuff I want to cover yeah okay thanks for watching it was Anfa uh, if you have any questions any requests for what what I should talk about what you what you would like to see and hear and have me explain let me know Write in the comments. Subscribe if you want more. Give me a like if you think this is worth it. Thanks. Bye.